Hello friends, it's The Stitches. I, um, uh, I don't know what happened, but the YouTube algorithm seems to have hit my last video pretty hard. And, uh, quite a few of you are new. So, um, hi, hello, I'm The Stitches. Uh, my name is a combination of Stitch, like stitching, and Duchess, like the Duchess of Devonshire. And, um, yeah, let's get crafting. Anytime I make a post or a video that includes my handmade bonnet, I get a request to make a tutorial, which honestly amuses me greatly because I did include this bonnet in a tutorial, but I kind of breezed through it. So I've decided to make a few millinery focused projects for those who want to learn how to make their own headpieces. If you don't have a pattern, you'll want to start with a head form that's roughly the size of your noggin. With a measuring tape, figure out approximately what size you want the bonnet base to be. You can do the measuring directly onto your own head if you don't want to invest in a head form, but I find that it's much easier to visualize the final result if you do have a head form and it just helps make nicer looking projects. Also determine how far out you want the ears to go. Now we just grab some scrap paper and use the measurements that we just took to create a rectangle shape. To get a symmetrical shape, I divide it into four points and using a design ruler, I want to make a curve on one of the boxes. This will create my final shape. Cut it out and fold the paper paper snowflake style. And then cut along that curve line that we made. Mmm, delicious weird oval bonnet shape. The ears are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I just wanted a six inch long shape and I made the base two inches wide, which I will eventually pleat down into one inch. Most of the time, if you're doing millinery work, you want to start with buckram. It's not as commonly used in sewing, but it's pretty easy to find even in my local Joann's, they carry it. Luckily, I already had all of my supplies on hand. It's totally okay to make your markings right onto the buckram since it's going to be covered up anyway. Be sure to mark placement for the ears as well. My markings start one inch away from the exact center point so that my ears will have two inches of space in between them. Once your pieces are cut, it's real tempting to want to iron them, but the heat will burn the stiffener in the buckram, so don't worry about the bends, the next step will take care of them. Along the edge of each piece of buckram, we're going to whip stitch a piece of wire. All you have to do is bend the wire into shape and stitch it down. Don't worry if it's not pretty, because this too will be covered. Once the buckram is wired, it's ready to be covered in baby fleece. Now, I do not have baby fleece, nor do I have any flannel, which I would normally recommend if you can't find baby fleece. So, um, I dug into my scraps and I found a piece of regular fleece. Um, it's an ideal, but it'll get the job done. Cut two pieces of baby flannel for each piece of buckram, adding about a quarter inch of seam allowance. Then pin your pieces into a fleece buckram fleece sandwich and slip stitch around the edges.
At this point, we're ready to cut our fabric pieces and again, this time adding a much more comfortable amount of seam allowance. I'm using this thrifted pink fabric that's some sort of cross between a suiting and a linen look. I, I honestly can't tell what they were going for with this. An optional step before covering the fleece layer is to pad stitch the pieces so that the fleece and the buckram act as a single piece of fabric. I personally never skip the pad stitching. I always do the pad stitching. I think it helps it look so much more clean and professional looking, but it is quite time consuming. And I'm sure you notice the sun setting in the background. Now I'm ready to stitch my fabric layer. I'm also going to add a little bit of lace trim to the ears. Once again, we're just securing the fabric with a simple slip stitch. I do the ears first so that I can stitch them to the base before it gets covered. To pleat the ears, I just bend the wire into like a box pleat shape and this will hold it in place well enough that I won't have to baste it before I attach the ears to the base. I recommend looking at yourself in a mirror with the bonnet held against your head after you secure the ears because if you decide that you want to move the placement of them, if they're too close together or too far apart or not sitting on your head right, you won't be able to change it later, so if you need to change it, now is the time to do it. To fit the fabric over the top of the bonnet, I mark the placement of my ears and cut a slit that I can carefully turn under. and the rest of my night was spent slip stitching the outer fabric into place. But after a good snooze, we'll get some daylight. Perhaps I was just a little too tired when I cut my fabric, but I ended up not having enough seam allowance on one of the edges, but as long as I can make the fabrics meet at the ends, it can be covered by the straps. Because we are going to need some sort of strap neck tie situation to actually attach this to a head. To create a nice rounded shape that will fit over your noggin, we'll pleat the ends of the bonnet base. My ends became one inch wide after pleating them, but whatever your width ends up being will be the width of your straps. And the strap ties are just a long rectangle that's folded over. Since I want a finished size of one inch, I'll need two inches once it's folded over. And since I'm also using a quarter inch of seam allowance for stitching, my final width needs to be two and a half inches. So remember to do the math before you cut your fabric. Iron, stitch, turn, iron again, if you've ever made dress straps, you know the drill. If you've been around a hot minute, you may recognize these pom-pom earrings from a previous accessory declutter video. We're going to harvest these and use them on the ends of our straps. I'm lucky enough that the pom-pom is on an elastic loop, so all I have to do is remove the old hardware and pass my fabric through the loop. And closing it up with a slip stitch is a pretty simple task after that. All that needs to be done now is slip stitch the ties to the bonnet face, and then it's done. I did this project just for fun, and I had a lot of fun making it. I didn't have any specific outfits in mind for this piece, but I'm beyond excited to experiment with it. 
I'm not sure what my next DIY video will be, but I will be making a tutorial for a Lolita style half bonnet sometime soon, but it will be a little bit more technical. That's all for today. I hope everybody has a good day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.